Don't let fat doctors fool you into believing detoxification is a myth. I never learned about detoxification in med school. Detoxification is real, it's scientific. Today in this video, we will be talking about methylation, we will be talking about our livers, and we will be talking about our most important detox organ, the lymphatic system. I will explain you everything I know about detoxification. And at the end, you will get some practical hacks that you can use right now to detox your body. And I will also tell you why my tongue is blue. The content presented here is all fake news. So let's get right into all the hustle. Chapter number one, the science of detoxification. Why should you even care about detoxification? Why am I so obsessed with the topic of detoxification? Let me give you a quick story. 10 years ago, I was in med school and I knew that detoxification was a scam. I just thought, okay, everybody around us is doing bullshit with detox. There's these detox tea by the Kardashians and everybody is saying detox is a scam. So, okay, then detox is a scam. I just believe that narrative. But our body, it has detox systems. We have different phases of detoxification that we are using every single day. And it doesn't end at the liver or the kidney. We have so much more to detoxification. If you understand these basics, then you will understand that it's true, real, and really necessary these days. Just let me ask you this question. What do you think? Why in the last 70 years, our rate of chronic diseases skyrocketed by over 700%. We went from 10% of people being chronically sick to over 70% of people being chronically sick. Something in there happened. In my hypothesis, it's the toxins. It's the toxins everywhere. I will not fearmonger you and talk to you about all the toxins that are hidden everywhere today. I will just make you understand how your body works so you can take better care of yourself. So in med school, we learned that there's two phases of detoxification, phase one and phase two. But before that, understand how we get toxins into our body. One of the ways is with our skin. Our skin is our biggest organ. Even when I got these tattoos, that's when I got heavy metals into my body. When I'm drinking this cup of coffee, then I'm getting microplastics and mold into my body. Maybe if there's a good coffee, then I won't get it. Number one, dad. Isn't that cute? So that's one way. Then there's also the air we breathe in. Here in Hull Hall, Berlin, the whole air is always looking gray and weird and we're inhaling these toxins. Usually it's particle size 2.5 nanometers or smaller, so they're really tiny fumes that we are inhaling. So that's kind of the ways we're getting toxin and the food we eat, of course, it's always there. Then phase one detoxification happens. Phase one detoxification happens with cytochrome P450. I won't bore you with many of the medical terms. Some of them are really important and some of them we will be mentioning later again. Cytochrome Cytochrome P450 is really important. It breaks down the fat soluble toxins. So afterwards we can work with them. Our body can do something with them, right? If it doesn't happen, then these fat soluble toxins, they get saved into our fatty tissue. If it doesn't work right, the system, then inflammation happens and oxidation happens. That's why here a system called glutathione is really, really important to know. We will also be focusing on this later, glutathione. And let me give you a little hint. Taking glutathione is not the way to go, in my opinion. There's way better remedies. You will learn about them. And then phase two detoxification happens. Phase two detoxification is all about the liver. The liver is our strongest detox organ. I'm sure you heard this dogma already. And what the liver does in a nutshell, broken down very simply, it attaches molecule to these toxins. It methylates them, for example. And with this methylation, that is nothing than putting a carbon and some hydrogen molecules on these toxins. And this way, then they can be processed and excreted through our body. And then detoxification ends when we get rid of the toxins, right? Either we pee them out, we poop them out, or we exhale them through our mouth and through our air. That's pretty much the main ways you know. And if it doesn't work right, then maybe these toxins get saved. There's heavy metals in our brains. There's parasites that stay in our gut. There's toxins, fat soluble ones that stay in our fat cells. And there's microplastics that are just adhering to our atheromes. There's a new study, by the way, recently that showed that 50% of atheromes of plug structures in our vessels, it's actually filled with microplastics. So there will be a lot of things going on with the microplastics in the next year. Stay tuned for that. That's pretty much the basics of detoxification, of how it works in our body. Additionally, there's a lot of systems that are involved with the whole detox process. You have our lymphatic system, for example. Our lymphatic system, it consists of over 600 lymph nodes. When I read that number, I was bamboozle like it's crazy there's 600 lymph nodes you only know the main ones you know the ones here you know the ones maybe under your armpits on your breast you know maybe the inguinal ones in your genital area but there's 600 of them and this 
lymphatic tissue, it takes the lymphatic fluids, it filters them out, it pretty much filters your blood in a nutshell. And then there's more, there's our tonsils, there's our adenoids. We will not be talking about all these different medical terms. We will just be talking about the main ways we can improve our detoxification processes. So let's talk about step number one, methylation. I explained to you, methylation is what happens together with the liver, where these toxins, they get bound together with the methyl groups. And this methylation, it's used all over our body. It's not only for detoxification, it's also for processing things, processing foods, processing enzymes, activating enzymes, deactivating enzymes. Many people, especially after the talks with Gary Brecker, they know that there's people that have issues with methylation. Methylation issues can express themselves in many different forms. That can be linked to heart issues, to arthritis, to inflammation, to anxieties, to sleep issues. Like there's a lot of systems involved, hypothyroidism, anxiety, they're all kind of involved with methylation in one way or another. So the cool thing is, if you improve your methylation status, and I will give you six ways to improve it right now, if you improve it, you don't only improve your detox system, you also improve your whole body's function. And in my opinion, most people would benefit from having better methylation processes. So what can you do right now? The first one is get more B1 and B2, especially B1. B1 is vitamin B1 thiamine. Thiamine is pretty much the best vitamin to regulate your whole methylation process. And what would I recommend for normies that want to improve their thiamine levels? The first one is eating more eggs. Eggs are the most bioavailable, cheap source of vitamin B1 we have. If you're a person that really wants to improve their methylation process, maybe you have a gene test that showed you, okay, my methylation doesn't work optimally, then you can also use some liposomal vitamin B1. It's a form that's bound to fat, so it's easier to absorb for your body versus the water-soluble B1. In a nutshell, eat more eggs. Step two I would recommend, avoid canola oils and seed oils. Seed oils are highly inflammatory and seed oils have been shown to directly disrupt normal methylation processes. So if you care about methylation, stop the seed oils. What are seed oils? Seed oils are canola oil, soybean oil, ripe oil, sunflower oil. There's all kinds of seed oils. You will notice them by them having pretty much no flavor because they bleach them. Otherwise they would taste completely rancid. You need to realize, one tablespoon of seed oils is over 10,000 seeds of that seed oil, right? So there's 10,000 sunflower seeds in that one tablespoon of seed oil. Seed oils are just no bueno. I have other videos on that. Just cut them out. The third step is eating more raw carrots. Carrots are able to bind excessive estrogens in our body. Excessive estrogens that could also be xenoestrogens or estrogens from the environment, from the microplastics, from the perfumes, from the fragrances. Raw carrots can bind those. And raw carrots, by this mechanism help glycine to work and glycine will be number four on our list of improving methylation you need enough glycine glycine is one of the amino acids is abundant in for example bone broth in collagen like in all these things but it's not in our normal food anymore our normal food muscle meat eggs they do not contain that much glycine glycine can also be supplemented in a powder form it pretty much tastes like sugar honestly it's like little little sugar molecules now you learned how to methylate better I gave you four important steps for methylation. I gave you glycine, raw carrots. I gave you improving your thiamine status with eggs, cutting out the seed oils, eating more raw carrots and getting in more glycine, either via glycine supplementation or using collagen or drinking bone broth. Let's hop right into the next chapter, into the liver. The liver is our most important detox organ. There is no arguing about it. All toxins that we consume get processed in the liver. So the number one step to improve your liver is Get rid of all the toxins. Stop consuming and inhaling and eating and smearing on your skin all these toxins. That's the first way to improve your liver. I know that's boring. You want more practical hacks. That's why I'm going to give them to you. If you're curious about how to getting rid of all these toxins of the environment and check out my other videos, I will put them in the link down below. Both in my testosterone video, I have a lot of insights into getting rid of toxins from the environment, but also in my toxin-free challenge, I talk a lot about how to get rid of all the toxins and how to change your environment to lift toxin-free. How would I practically improve the liver 
the best bang for your buck. It's by improving the glutathione system. Glutathione, I talked to you earlier, it's the master antioxidant system. Some people like to supplement glutathione, but in my experience, there's even better ways. The first way is increasing your vitamin B1. We already talked about this when we talked about methylation, eating more eggs, liposomal thiamine. The next one is consuming more vitamin C rich fruits. That would be grapefruits, that would be lemons, that would be limes, that would be kiwis, like all these foods that contain a lot of vitamin C. They improve your redox system, like your oxidation reduction system. They improve the antioxidation system and they restore the ability to glutathione work. So you're indirectly pushing glutathione to work more efficiently in a nutshell. Third one, we have the sulfur rich foods. Sulfur, that could be donors from, for example, garlic or from onion. Increasing these, the same with the vitamin C, you indirectly improve the glutathione antioxidation system. So garlic and onions are very easy way to improve the system. So a practical hack that I always preach and that I also love to do myself is you take a glass of lemon water in the morning with 330 milliliters of water. You add one lemon or one key lime. One half lemon might be enough if your lemons are humongous. Like these days I noticed there are some lemons that are huge. I don't know if that's natural. You can let me know in the comments. I don't know. And you add some cayenne pepper and you add some turmeric. The cayenne pepper increases the turmeric's ability to be an antioxidant to the liver. And you drink this concoction pretty much every morning. Of course, it's not medical advice. You should not do that. It's there, dangerous and so on. But that's what I would be doing if I want to improve my liver status very easily and cheap. Last but not least, what you can also do and what I also like to do is using herbs like milk thistle, like dandelion. You can also use N-acetylcysteine. I talk a lot about these herbs in my liver function video. I have a whole video about reversing fatty liver. So if you want to know more about this, please check that out. The thing with these herbs, a little word of caution. These herbs always come with side effects and some of them are stronger than others. So I would be careful with the dosages. I would not just randomly consume herbs all the time. You could be hurting yourself. The lemon water with cayenne pepper and turmeric, that's pretty fool's proof. And now we come to why my tongue is it even blue still? I don't even know. I don't, I'm not seeing the camera right now. So now I'm going to quickly give you a little disclaimer about why my tongue is blue. My tongue is blue because I use a supplement called Methylen Blue. No, I don't have a link. I'm not affiliated with any of them. I'm just a crazy dude that loves to try out things and I'm trying out Methylen Blue right now. Methylen Blue is something that is clinically used for hepatic injuries, so for injuries with the liver system. And Methylen Blue is extremely potent at improving mitochondria function. And right now in my alternative health bubble, I've been in this bubble for two decades almost and I'm always trying out new things and right now I'm just all about methylen blue. It's not something I recommend everybody. I don't think this is the basis that you should be doing right now. I'm just curious what happens to my body, monitoring my own body, reading the research and science about it. So if I learn more about methylene blue, I will let you know. Please don't try this out at home. The health bubble, there's always these crazy trends, crazy biohacks. In a nutshell, natural remedies, herbs, eating the right way, avoiding toxins will be 99% of your health journey. There's actually this fascinating study and it illustrates this quite well. And that shows the curve of efficiency and what you get by doing things kind of goes up to a certain level and this is the journey that most people are on in the health journey. They're cutting out the toxins, they're getting better quite quickly and you're getting a lot of results very quickly. And then you get to this point of diminishing returns and you're doing a lot of more things but they don't really help. And then after a while it actually goes down the things that you're acquiring and that you're achieving because you're simply putting too much effort and focus on health and unless this is your profession, you should not spend 18 hours a day worrying about your health. And worrying in general will likely decrease your health. So take everything with a great of salt, take a deep breath, don't take methylene blue and keep on watching. Third point, the lymphatic system. I feel personally this is the most interesting system. This is also the system that's revolved around our adenoids. It's the system revolved around our tonsils. And why are they removing the tonsils? This is mind boggling to me, but this is the topic for another day as well. How can we improve our lymphatic system? Our lymphatic system takes out all the debris. It filters our body, it filters our blood, it purifies it as Esoteric as it sounds, it literally purifies our blood. Let's improve our lymphatic system. The first one is manual techniques. It's tapping the big six points on your body, the big lymphatic systems. This already improves lymphatic flow. There are systems like cupping where you build like a cup and you're putting this on your elbows. And honestly, this feels already incredible. Like it feels like it already 
improves your blood flow. There's techniques like jumping. No, I won't get up, but you can jump on the ground for two minutes and this massively activates blood flow through your body. It also activates lymphatic flow inside your body. Second up, we have magnesium. Let's stay on the ground. Magnesium is my favorite mineral. I will keep on preaching this probably for the next 10 years. My opinion on magnesium didn't change for the last five years. Magnesium is the most important mineral we all have. Our souls are all depleted of minerals and we need more magnesium. Magnesium is amazing for helping the lymphatic system work. A little quick, cool hack. You can use magnesium sulfate, which is also called Epsom salt baths. And in these Epsom salt baths, you can put yourself 15 minutes and this is the easiest, quickest detox hack you can do right now. More detox hacks later. Third up, we have to stop vasoconstriction. What is vasoconstriction? Vasoconstriction means that your arteries are being constricted, so they're tinier, and this makes your blood flow worse. And what are the most biggest culprits that ruin our vasoconstriction? It's alcohol, it's caffeine, and it's cigarettes. So these three things, or even nicotine, these three things you need to reduce as much as possible to improve your blood flow. On the other hand, if you're eating more watermelon, which has L-citrulline, then you can directly increase vaso vasodilation, which is the opposite of vasoconstriction. So you increase blood flow. Last but not least, hydrate yourself. Hydrating yourself does not mean drinking five liters of water. Hydrating yourself means drinking good water, so filtered tap water or spring water optimally, with some minerals. You can add some sea salt, some Celtic salt, whatever. What these minerals do is they open up the osmosis channels so this water can literally go inside your organs it can go inside your muscle. It can go inside your tissue where you want the water. If you do not do this, then the water will not hydrate you. Don't you know these people that are drinking five liters of water, pissing out six liters of water and always feel dehydrated? Don't be one of those people. That's it. Congratulations. You know the main path of detoxification that you can manipulate right now. There's a lot of science about detoxification. I'm actually writing a whole book about this because I find it fascinating. I want to stop this madness that mainstream science does not acknowledge that there is a detox system in our body and that we can improve our detox system. If you want to learn everything I know about detoxification already, and yes, this is a little advertisement for my own product, I have a detox masterclass. And in this detox masterclass, I teach you how to get rid of parasites, microplastics, about heavy metals, about all these kind of toxins, breaking up chronic bacterial infections. I have protocol that in 10 days gets rid of all of these toxins. We are having a community with over 300 people already and you get lifelong access to this community. You just need to click on the website down below detox-masterclass.com and you get lifelong access to everything. If I release this book, you get it for free. All my materials, everything is on there. It's my life project. So if you want to join, everybody's invited to join there. Last chapter, the practical hacks. Chapter number four. Hack number zero, the sauna. If you know me, you know I love the sauna. The sauna is the best detox hack you can use. The sauna makes you live longer. Yes, I can say this with medical accuracy. The sauna reduces your chance of cardiometabolic diseases, of Alzheimer's diseases, of all kinds of neurodegenerative diseases, and it also pulls out heavy metals out of your skin. Number zero, the sauna. Number one, sulfur-rich foods like onions and garlic. They are able, with their sulfur donor abilities, to draw out heavy metals out of your body. Consume more garlic and consume more onions. Number two, raw milk will decrease gastrointestinal issues and will decrease cadmium from your body. Number three, quality oysters and vitamin C rich foods like camu camu can reduce blood levels of aluminum. Number four, almost all high quality animal products besides dairy can help you battle methylmercury due to their selenium content. Number five, sun-dried raisins can displace fluoride from the pineal gland. Number six, organic Granny Smith apples can increase the excretion of aluminium from your body. Number seven, quality organ foods can aid the detoxification of bisphenol A. Number eight, carrots can eliminate excess estrogens from the gut, especially raw ones. Number nine, I'm not even getting the fingers right. Vitamin B1 thiamine is a main chelator of heavy metals. Number 10, magnesium malate has the ability to remove heavy metals from the body. And number 11, activated charcoal can chelate and deactivate heavy metals from the body. That's all about the science of detoxification. And let me end this video how I end all of my videos. There are natural remedies for every problem in the human body. You just don't know them. Wake up 